Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of Veritox, an ongoing conversation on the joy, struggle, and pursuit of big ideas. I'm Scott and I'm here with Andrew, Jeff, Jordan, and James, and we are Veritas, and we're all currently social distancing at home. And yep. we, you know, we realize most of our friends are currently social distancing at home as well. And so we decided to call a bunch of them up and interview them and let you guys listen into the conversations. And we are so honored and thankful that our very first guest on Veritalx is the iconic living legend, Sandy Patty. Mm. Sandy! Yeah. Like, how in the world did that happen? I'll tell you how that happened. So we had the awesome privilege of being invited by Sandy to come and join her on her forever grateful tour. I think we did about 145 concerts nationwide, and it was a, a, an incredible opportunity. It was a blast, yeah. and really she became uh, our one of our closest friends, and some of us call her uh, Sandy Mom, you yeah. know, because we've been with her for for the so long. But she's more like a sister to me. But it was an incredible <laughs> opportunity. <Yeah. laughs> That's right. It's definitely something you can't say no to when somebody like Sandy Patty, who has something like 40 Dove Awards, she has like six Grammys, she probably has like an Oscar we don't know about. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably uh, true. <laughs> but yeah, it was something that we couldn't turn down and we were just honored to have her have her as our as our first guest. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And so I know I'm excited to hear this interview and James and Jeff, you had the opportunity to sit down with Sandy and just uh, ask her some questions, get some insight. And I am sure this is going to be something that you all will enjoy hearing. So here is our very first episode of Veritas. Well, I tell you, we couldn't have talked a few weeks ago. That is for sure. Yeah. I know. And, and woo. You know, you made it known on social media that you were um, diagnosed with COVID-19. And so that was obviously um, a difficult thing for all of us to hear and your fans and friends and family. Do you mind just giving us a quick update how you're feeling right now? Yeah, I'd be glad to. You know, um, I was, I had been feeling really good. Just, I've been swimming and just feeling really good and traveled one weekend yeah and um came home by the time i got home i felt done i don't this was march the 9th i think i said i just i don't feel terrible but i don't feel great so then we went to the doctor and that was like back in the day like four weeks ago it that doesn't yeah. that feel like that's just so long ago oh my God. i know <laughs> how many COVID-19 tests, you know, we did strep, we did, you know, flu, all of that, mm -hmm. everything was negative, but I just didn't get better. So a mm -hmm. week later, I talked to my doctor and he goes, you know, I think you just need to go to the ER because if anybody has, you know, the test, it would be the ER. So I don't have any. Um, so I went to the ER and they ruled out everything else and then tested for COVID. They didn't test on because, like I said, back in the day, four weeks ago, yeah. there weren't as many tests. So they assumed, you know, since he had all the same symptoms, that whatever mine turned out to be, they would assume his. Yeah. So they called the next day. Yeah. And, I was and there was... I I have to tell you for a moment, I was relieved to know yeah. something definitive. You know what I mean? Right. Because I could kind of get free, lean into just getting better. So this virus is, is sneaky. It's, you don't feel terrible, but you don't feel great. And so I felt like I, I wanted to give a face to this virus. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's why. I mentioned it on social media because I just, this is, it is real. And this virus, it ain't plain. We have some amazing uh, people at our church who are, I'm sure you guys know, who are in the medical profession and 
-hmm. She's one of the main doctors at an emergency room here. And she's like, I'm thrilled if you feel better, but I, you can't afford for me to be sick. Yeah. Right. And the way she put it, it was like, that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, just do our part and, and stay in. And if you're outside, stay away from people. Yeah. And just all of those things. And, and I'll tell you, it was easier for me to say all those things when I felt bad. Now I'm having to say those things to myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Stay in six feet apart. Yeah. You know, all of that. Yeah. But it's real. And if you, you know, I just take a moment and say, if anybody that's watching, you know, just feels not quite a hundred percent, but not terrible. This is the season. Don't take anything for granted. Right. Um, right. This is not playing. It's not. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll say it's been hard for me to just to, to, continue to be educated on what needs because it's changing every day as new research is happening and new data is being found it's like i want to go to the park i want to go to the grocery store i want to know all the things it's like but no staying home this is the best yeah. way for me to love my neighbor as myself right now. absolutely right. you know and especially <laughs> for those people who are treating yeah. humanity right now we cannot afford for them to get sick mm -hmm. so, right no we we have to do that don and i are now 14 days symptom free oh so that's great there is a a bit of relief in that i have to tell you that we're not sitting here wondering oh do we have it did we have it yeah so for that part um you know i'm very thankful yeah. for that well we we are too we are too and <laughs> I want to say that we are so thankful and honored that you would say yes to being a part of this. This is our very first episode. That's right. You got you're my boys. You know, and you're, and you're like Jeff's baby my mom, mom. You know, I'm like your mom and Jeff's little and Jeff's big sister. Yes. Hey, <laughs> the sister I never had, right? <laughs> I want to talk about your book yeah. because I read it and, and what I want to say first and foremost is that when I read, when I bought it, I knew that I would get to know you on a deeper mm -hmm. level. What I did not expect was to get to know myself on a deeper level. I didn't expect to learn more about myself mm. first off as a human being second off uh, as a singer and as an artist and that just really took me by surprise have you had that kind of feedback from other friends or fans who have read your book so far well first of all i want to say thank you for reading it yeah. um it, it is it is not an easy read um but my prayer is that it is an encouraging read and it and, very much was. And yes, I have had people when I, since I really started beginning to share my story about sexual abuse and, you know, first marriage and things like that, the more comments I have had from people were, thank you so much. I'm so glad to know I'm not alone. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, you know, it's not that we would be <clears throat> one another at all. Mm -hmm. But there is something that feels um, settling to at least know that we're not alone. Right. And I have had people say it's helped me be brave yeah. mm. to either go to counseling and yeah. figure out my story or the freedom to tell my story. Right. So I don't want to just rehash old stories for the sake of rehashing it, because I'll be honest. I pick up shame way too easily. Yeah. Way too easily. But if my story can be an encouragement to someone else yeah. to lay down their shame or to figure mm. out where their shame was, you know, or whatever, if that can encourage someone into a closer and deeper and more meaningful relationship, 
to Jesus, yeah. then it is worth it. So can, can you unpack the word shame for, for us a little bit? Because I think everybody has a different definition. Yeah. We all have a different yeah. understanding of what shame could be. The best definition I have ever heard is from my friend Sheila Walsh. And it's guilt tells us we've done something wrong. Shame right. tells us we are something wrong. Yes. Wow. And that just makes it really clear for me. Yeah. Shame mm -hmm. is like, and I, I don't mean to use an odd analogy, but that feeling of, of a, that, those plastic shower curtains you know, that wet shower curtain that's wrapped around you and you yeah. just can't get it started even yeah. to pull off. You know, right. it, it can happen, but it's, it's a lot of work. That, that is a great visual image of shame, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. And um, I, I just, you know, there's things that we need to attend to, yes. But then there are things we have tended to and it is time to leave them at the foot of the cross. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Oh, I was just gonna ask, what are some tools, resources, some things that you could share with us and our audience, how you have overcome that shame uh, that maybe we can learn from? Well, I will tell you that it is an, it's an ever evolving journey. Um, I have, I have learned to recognize it more than anything. Yeah. And the earlier I can recognize it, the, uh, the easier I can replace that thought with something. Yeah. Usually, and most often, something from God's word. Right. Uh, Patsy Claremont says, refuse without thoughts. Refuse, replace, repeat. Yeah. Love it. Refuse that thought, replace that thought, yep. and then repeat it. And, um, you know, you, you guys know Jonathan, our son, Jonathan. Yeah. And uh, he's had a major head injury since he was about two years old. And in his journey, one of the things that he has learned with his neurologist is negative thoughts are like Velcro. Mm -hmm. There's a yes. negative thought, but it just sticks in our head. You, you guys know this. Like you can have a hundred people at a concert say that was the most meaningful thing, and one person go, "You should not button your coat when you're standing up," or what I, you know, whatever. And that's what you're going to remember, right? Yes. That's, yeah. So, um, but and and positive thoughts are like Teflon. They don't stick unless when you get that positive thought, you gotta grab it and hold on to it and, and just focus on that for like 20 seconds. When you do that, it begins to change you. you. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's also another tool is I try really hard to refuse those negative things. I, I, can I just be honest? This coronavirus has brought up every insecurity I have ever had in my entire life. Really? Wow, yeah. And I, I will say things, I'll say things to myself like, oh, you're so stupid. And I'm thinking, why am I saying this to myself? And I said to Don the other day, I finally was able to figure out words. Like I'll be cleaning the you know kitchen and I'll spill something, and I just I'm like oh so stupid, and I'm telling these terrible things to myself. Yeah. And I said out loud to him, I said, you know, it just finally occurred to me. I'm saying out loud what I think everyone else is thinking about. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm gonna say it before you say that was really stupid. And he's like, baby. No. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you've been around us. You know he yeah. adores me. You know? Apparently <laughs> so. And uh, I do, I feel the same, but it's that has brought up this you're a bad girl. Mm. I, I don't know. It's been very strange. Yeah. Um, so 
that brings me to another thing that has been helpful to me is I journal. Yeah. And I say everything I want to say in my journal that only is for me and God. Good. And I, I put swear words in there sometimes. Yeah. And I, I say, you know, what I am angry about. And, you know, so that is also there. So recognizing sooner yeah. when mm-hmm. that hidden curtain starts to, that has a big, a big helpful one. Yep. Yeah. Those thoughts and grab hold of the positive thoughts. Yeah. And then journaling also helps to just get it out of my spirit. Yeah. I can always pick up my journal and read it again if I want to remember. Sure. Chances are I don't want to remember. Sure. But it get it lifts the weight. Yeah. I think Good. one of the things that I've I learned a few years ago just how much of an impact shame has been playing in my own life and operating and making choices from a place of shame that feeling of i'm something's wrong with me i'm not good enough i'm not worthy enough of other people to accept me and to like me and it took me like just what you're saying it took me being able to stop and hear those stories that i would tell myself you know, mm-hmm. that I didn't realize I was saying to myself, but I right. was saying them and they were so loud, but I so couldn't loud. hear them. I could yeah. feel them, but I couldn't hear them. Yeah. You know? And it was just, it's mind blowing. Well, what do you do with that then? So mm-hmm. I what have you learned in the last few years? I, well, journaling has been a huge part yeah. of that. Because then if I can't name it, I can't feel it. And if I can't feel it, I can't heal it. Come on with that. You got to be able to name it. it. Come on with that. And when you begin to feel your feelings and be able to voice those, then you can be able to start experience healing from those things. You know? That's good. That's good, James. That's very, very good. Because at the end of the day, we, what we're longing for and what shame is telling us we're not worthy of is love and belonging. Mm-hmm. Right. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Yep. Yep. You know? Yeah. We're not worth being loved. Right. Mm. And I mean, then are we saying we're not worth God loving us? I mean, does it, does it ultimately the string go all the way back there? Probably. Well, and yeah. I think, I have a little bit of a, of a theory around that. And this kind of dovetails to something you wrote about in your book. I think that all humans grow up as children assuming love from other people, from adults, from parents. You know, we walk as children, we walk up to our parents and we outstretch our arms because we know that they're going to give it to us. We assume that they're going to give mm-hmm. it to us. There comes a moment in life, whether that's through some traumatic experience or through the loss of a friend, you know, a friend moves away or something, that we stop assuming love and we start believing that we have to earn love. Mm-hmm. And then that, yep. that makes us feel like we have to tweak ourselves and improve ourselves and make ourselves more likable that enough thing if i were thin enough or if i were smart enough or if i were young enough or if i were all that enough 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 yeah yeah and you so bravely told about those moments in your book and i just can't that's what i kept thinking about when i was reading it wow so brave of you to tell these stories and to put your well i think uh, you know, when I, was, when I was six, a woman's pleasure was more important than my innocence. And you're wow. exactly right. You assume, well, adults don't, adults know stuff. So, yeah. like, you know, I, I guess I must have done something wrong. Because you don't know any different. Adults should be safe, just like you said, James. That is sort of our assumption, and adults should be safe. We should feel loved and welcome. So 
if that isn't happening, even though we don't have, I didn't have words at six, right. there's this feeling, well, it must be my fault. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there is where, for me, the slinky, it yeah. just started going round and round and round. So everything, you know, I became the perfect codependent. Because wow. I was happy to take the blame for everyone and everything else. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and then you start to pull that thread and you see my thinking was completely upside down, which is what abuse will do. Yeah. You, with abuse, you begin to view the world through a wrong lens, but you think it's the right lens. Right. And when you begin to say, oh, wait, this is not, and you begin to start, you know, sharpening that lens on the camera and the picture starts getting clearer and yep. clearer. You go, oh, everything I thought mm -hmm. was right was not, but everything really I kind of hoped would be right is right. God does yeah. love me. Yeah. My, you know, all of that, but it is a... It is a journey and it is a process and there are remnants yeah. that just will pop up and especially in a crisis time like this, I've like seen those little bubbles pop up and go, Ooh, okay, all right, well. Hi everyone, I know you're enjoying this conversation with our friend Sandy Patty and we're gonna get back to that in just a second. But before we do, we just wanna ask that you do us two favors. First one is this, would you just, if you're enjoying this and you wanna see more Vera Talks, would you go down below and just hit the subscribe button? It's that red button down there. We've got some exciting interviews we're gonna be releasing in the next few weeks. And if you're subscribed to our channel, you'll get notified every time that those come out. The second favor I wanna ask is if you would just go down to the description box below and check out that Patreon link. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it's a low cost monthly subscription to our artist page on there. And we provide exclusive content only on our Patreon page. So anything from early access to music videos, we do monthly virtual hangouts with our patrons on there. Uh, we do early access to Veritalks, bonus footage from Veritalks. Uh, we even do like singing tips and we provide discount codes for our merch and things like that. But we would love for you to check that out. It's just that little link next to the word Patreon in the description box down below. Now, let's get back to our conversation with Sandy Patty. And this podcast and vlog that we're doing, um, really kind of focuses on the big ideas. And um, it's, the, it's this conversation that we want to have with each person that talks about the joy and the struggle as we pursue big ideas. And you've had a lot of great success that people can see. But at the same time, how do you keep yourself motivated for the next thing? What is the next big idea for Sandy Patty? Obviously, we saw this book that's come out. I'm sure you're thinking about the next thing. What is, what is that for you? Well, I'm going to answer it a little differently than you might think because I am Great. 64 and I can. <laughs> Great. Yes, so, you please tell. Uh, the, we're, we have eight kids between us. And we currently have four grandkids, and we're expecting four this year. Woo! Four more. Four more. It's a house yes. of many nations right there. Don <laughs> said it's a bumper crop this year. <laughs> 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 and I, I suppose that the next big thing for this season of our life is to love our family well. That's good. And I love what I'm getting to do at the church. As artists yeah. in residence, I am loving that. And Don is the pastor of the chapel service, which is a little more simple and sacred. And mm -hmm. we are loving that, but we are also fine. I think the next big idea that may not be a big career idea, but a sure. big idea for me is to mentor. Yeah. It's great. 
because I know what it has felt like to be on the road with Billy and Gloria Gaither. And yeah. you, know, you said so sweetly, James, but I too, I felt like I was in a master class every night. Mm -hmm. And I was that annoying person that would go to their bus afterwards and say, you know, why did you do this song last night? Or why did you do, why did you do an encore tonight that you did last night? Well, now, why did you? And they just were so gracious in letting me ask those questions. And I love one-on-one -on -one with some of the girls, you know, that are at our church and just getting to speak into them as women and as moms and as professionals and all of that. So that for me, I, yeah. want, I want to step into that with a little more structure, but yeah. that's where my heart is. And to do that, I have to be available. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to be a mentor and I want to be available. Yeah, so good. What do you think okay. some of the biggest, for creatives in general, some of the biggest obstacles that creatives face? And what are some things that you face and you've had to overcome? You know, I mean, we've obviously talked about shame and the feeling of not enough, but are there other more just practical things that you've had to overcome in your creative processes? Yeah. yeah. It's as simple as the idea. Yeah. Huh. It, if you don't have, have that next idea. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking about forever grateful. And I'm not saying this just because I'm talking to you guys. I've said this to other people. I loved having my family. I loved the idea of what the night was going to look like. Mm -hmm. But there was a piece missing. And when you, we all did a couple shows together and I said to Mike Atkins, this is what I'm missing. This is it. Yeah. Once that piece was in place, the idea oh, no. was just magical for me. Oh. Mm. The idea. So, you know, the lack of an idea for a song, the lack of an idea for a project, the lack of an idea. Bill Gaither always said this, if you don't have a plan, you're going to become the victim of everybody else's plan. Oh, would you please well, good. say that again? Yes. Yeah. If you don't have a plan, you become the victim of everybody else's plan. Yeah. So good. So he's like, it's okay for you to have some direction in what yeah. you want to do. And that might mean if this is what you said yes to, this might be what you need to say no to. Right. But mm. if you don't have that plan, that idea for yourself. Yeah. It is very hard when things come in, you go, yeah, okay, we'll do that, we'll do that. So. Um, would you say, would you say saying the word no is an obstacle? It used to be, yes, for me. I felt like I can't, how can I say no? How can I say no? I'll, and then I think I heard Max Lucado on, like I used to get those little cassettes of sermons. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's just where we are, kids. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I would listen, and one time he talked about putting your family on the calendar. Mm. Mm. Or putting, you make an appointment, Don, Don says this, I hear him talking to his, his guys, and they'll say, make, a, make a, an appointment with yourself. Wow. Um, yeah. And so when then somebody says, hey, are you available this night? You go, no, you know what, I've got plans. They don't have to know what the plans are. Right. Right. But it's okay for plans to be family. Yes, absolutely. It's okay for plans to be, and I need to, I'm home two days this week. Yep. I'm going to make an appointment with myself. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. So when you've said yes to something, it, it means you do have to say no. To right. something. That's, that's right. Or you can yep. flip it. And this is what helped me. I can say no to something because it means I've said yes to something else. Yes. So I turned it around and that helped my head yeah. not feel like, oh, I'm just saying no. Yeah. No, oh, I wish I could say yes. I mean, I, but I've already said yes to this. Yeah. You know. So. I feel like sometimes I have to say no to myself. To yes. Be to be able to say yes to the things that I've committed to do. Because I, I, I want to do it all, you know. 
I want to write the songs. I want to write the melodies. Uh, <laughs> I want to do the arrangement. I want to do everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let me give you a story for that. Please. Please. My very first, you, um, you, we've been around each other enough to know, you know that I do this bit, this show in Indianapolis every couple of years. Yeah. Yes. The live orchestra, live singers, um, nothing is pre-recorded. Um, it, there's like nine, uh, nine costumes involved just for myself. Yes. I mean, it, <laughs> it's just so fun. So I, this will be the 20th year that, that I have, since I hosted the first time. Yeah. I get to host again. I will never in a million years forget my first Yuletide. Because I was used to, you, you could, you'll connect with me on this, being the only person on stage with maybe one other person. Mm -hmm. So I had to do it all. I had to, you know, keep yeah. the plates spinning. So I would rehearse with a cast of about 20 with that same mindset. Mm -hmm. I have to do all this. I have to be all things. Mm -hmm. And I remember after our dress rehearsal, the director calling me. I'm sure I've told you guys this story before. And calling me and saying, Sandy, you are, you're doing a great job working hard, but you're not leaving room for anyone else on the stage. Wow. And he was absolutely right. Can I interrupt you? Please. And just say, brava to you for receiving that direction. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't have to. Oh, well, uh, maybe, I'm but, but I was like, you know, I was exhausted. Sure. And so I think he was kind of saying it to me to give me permission to back off. But I will, I mean, it was life changing to me. Sure. Yeah. So when we all got to be out on the road together, mm -hmm. you know, it was like, I just felt like I could pick, hey, Veritas, y'all sing this. Hey, family, y'all sing this. Hey, you know, it was just, I felt like I didn't have to be all things in all moment, in every moment for every person. So I, sure. I'm kind of saying that back to you. Mm -hmm. Because the other thing he said to me, you're not making room for any, well, anybody else on stage. Trust your fellow artists. Yeah. Mm. That's so good. So good. So and good. That's, been, that's been life giving. It's not a competition. It's a, we're all in this thing together. And yes. I think we're finding that out more now than ever before. You know, everybody's I, doing their part to yeah. try to stop the spread of this horrible virus. Yes. And we do have <laughs> so to another, another quotable Bill Gaither. When mm -hmm. the death ends, everybody wins. That's right. Right? Oh. Yeah. Night wins, everybody. Y'all thought these were my good sayings, weren't, didn't you? I just stop. Originality is forgetting who you steal them from. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap up this. And once again, thank uh -huh. you so much, Sandy. But before we go, we want to do a few little rapid. We end yeah, got to have some fun. Rapid okay. Rapid. All right. So Jeff is going to start with the first five. And then I'll finish with the last one, okay? So, Jeff? And we, we want the first thing that comes off your, out of your mind, all right? Just rapid fire, all right? Here's the first one. What's your favorite meal? Mexican food. Wow. Anything particular in Mexican food that you love? Cheese enchiladas with ranchero sauce. Woo! Come on. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> favorite style to sing? Ooh, probably my personal favorite style to sing is, is like, Jazz music, mm. and you do that so well. I want to so well. Jazz like tour songs. <laughs> Can that be the next big idea? When you get it together and you're spending time with your family, please make a jazz record. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Yes. We'll see what happens. Yes. Um. All right. What is the last show you binged or you are currently watching right now? <sighs> Ozark. <laughs> Ah, I love it. That hey, that's like number two on Netflix right now. Got so, it. You got to love that. All right, so a concert that you'll never forget. 
Celine, it could be yours or somebody else's. Uh, Celine Dion in Paris, France. Yeah. In Paris? In Paris. Gosh. Wow. You know those folks, that had to be an electric night. It, she did it all in French. We happened to, I was there and had been singing at a church. And I just happened to look at this little thing you get in the hotel and I said, oh, Celine Dion, oh, she was just here. Wait a minute, that's tonight. <laughs> Uh, it was amazing. It was all in French to hear that arena sing her songs to her in French. It was amazing. Sure. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. All right. My last one is, what is your, who is your favorite author? Oh, wow. I love, I go from Richard Rohr. Yes. Who I adore, to Nora Roberts and J.D. Robb, who are the same person. But, nice. you know, it's kind ben. of that. Yeah. Wow. Love them. Okay. So now I'm gonna pick it up. Uh, favorite singer? I know that one. Natalie Grant. Yeah! <laughs> Have you been watching her song, away, a song a day? I just wanna throw my shoes at the TV screen. Every I know. Day. Melinda Doolittle, who follows her, has the best responses. I love her. To her singing. But yes, it's just fantastic. Okay, next one. One thing you miss about being on tour? Oh, mm, just the hang with people that I love. Yeah. Yes. Hanging with people that I love. love and the bus, you know, the, like the flying right now. Mm -mm. But bus life <laughs> with a with group of people that you love is the best. It is. Yeah. Best. It's so great. Um, Dream role on Broadway. Harris Van der Gelde. Yes, <laughs> yes ma'am. I would yes, I would love to do Dolly sometime in the next what eight or nine years. Oh my god! Yes, I would just. You would love say it. that. Yes, Ephraim, please. Ephraim, let me go. It's time. <laughs> Every night, all these years, I've put out the trash. I've let the dog out. I've locked the back door. No. Anyway. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to do and that. Just, you saw it here first. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Something people get wrong about you. Okay. And I'm an extrovert. Yeah. Okay. I'm You're an not extrovert. an extrovert. Y'all know that. I I'm do not. know that. You're not an extrovert. An introvert. Mm -mm. I extrovert on stage. Yes. Because that's part of, I feel like that's part of my job description. Yep. But I am not naturally an extrovert. I have to recover then with this. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Okay, last one. Yeah. Oh, are you at your piano? I am. So am I. Mine's behind me, but I don't play it. <laughs> okay. You probably, you don't even know that song. I, I can't place it at the, at the moment. So, last one. Something you're deeply grateful for. Oh. I, I know, I, I, the obvious answer is the Lord and that's true so true but i want to say so i am just i'm deeply grateful for during this time right now the community that people are still trying to be part of yes somehow um it's it's our our family talk we talk all day long with you know in a group text yeah we haven't done that in a while just mm -hmm. connecting with friends and people and online, you know, uh, all the distance has been sweet to see the desire for people to still engage in community. That's so sweet. I want, if you wouldn't mind, Sandy, telling people where they can find your book, find your music, oh, sure. how they can stay up with what you're doing. Um, what's the best way for people to connect with you? Yeah, sure. Thank you. There's always a good old website, sandypatty.com, S-A-N-D-I. P-A-T-T-Y. That's right. 
Um, <laughs> I'm also on social media. So on Facebook, I'm Sandy Patty. I think it's official. Is it official? I'm not sure. Yep. But it's just Patty, and then it will say if it's official or not. And then on Instagram, I'm Sandy Patty P because believe it or not, there was somebody else who already took Sandy Patty. Really? I'm Sandy Patty P, as in Teslas, on Facebook, uh, uh, on Instagram. On Instagram. I just posted today how we love. Jay was in town. Oh. And, and so we filmed it yesterday. It's just, you know, iPhone quality, but, it, you know, it's just a good song for right now. Um, so you can find me all there. You can, I think you can find the book at Amazon. Yeah. Um, I also did an audible version. So you can uh, find that on Amazon as well. Awesome. Did you do it? I did. I read it. Oh, man. Yeah, I read it. I read it myself. Read it. And it was so great to have the opportunity to speak with Sandy. It was such an incredible mm -hmm. interview. Just she has such insight. And yeah. the other thing that I noticed from that um, that interview that we had um, was just to hear how brave she is. Um, mm. to be able to share her heart and be vulnerable with our audience. You know, there's so many people out there that are going to need to hear this interview. So um, I know I did. And I enjoyed listening to her and. I always love having the time to just sit down and chat with Sandy. She's always got great insight. Yeah. That's right. And, and if you want more of these interviews, be sure to uh, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. And, and if you want to receive some bonus material from these interviews and exclusive episodes, you can support us on Patreon. That's right. Yeah. I guess out there also be sure to follow us on all of our socials at Veritas5, where you can find us on all those. Uh, like, follow, and we really hope you enjoyed this, our very first episode of Veritox. And here is to your next big idea. Bum, 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 b